All right, thanks for watching. And today we'll use the Fourier transform to solve any PDE. Any PDE? Yes, any PDE, as long as it's linear and constant coefficient, and at least formally. So to illustrate, let's try to solve ut equals minus u x x x x. So quadruple x with some initial condition, u of x zero equals f of x. And we will do it at least formally using both the Fourier transform and the inverse Fourier transform. So the first step is again, as usual, so take the f, take Fourier transforms, so put hat on both sides of the equation, so ut equals minus u x x x x. So put hats. And then I would like to remind you of two facts that we'll use now. So first of all, we are taking the Fourier transform with respect to x. And in particular, t acts like a constant with respect to x, and therefore, when you take the Fourier transform of ut, that's just the same as taking the derivative with respect to t of the Fourier transform. That's one thing, and the other one is, I would like to remind you of the Fourier transform miracle that tells you that the Fourier transform of ux is, I believe, minus, mm, yeah, I believe minus i kappa u hat, simply by using an integration by parts. And so, in particular, this u x x x x, well, use the fact once to get minus i kappa u x x x, use the fact twice, to get minus i kappa minus i kappa u x x and well you can do it two more times and in the end you get minus i kappa to the fourth power of u hat now minus one to the fourth power is one i to the fourth power is one and then kappa to the fourth power so you get kappa to the fourth you have. And so if you plug in both things to the, so this fact and this fact into that PDE, you end up getting d over dt u hat equals minus kappa to the fourth u hat, which is now an ODE that we'll be able to solve. So just to remind you what we got so far, d over dt u hat is minus kappa to the fourth u hat. And the next thing is solve this ODE. Solve the ODE. Because it is an ODE with t, because this is the same thing, really, if you think about it, as y prime equals a y, where a is minus kappa to the fourth, which doesn't depend on t. And remember, the solution of this is c e to the a t. And so, in this case, what we get, u hat kappa t is, so c, which is a constant with respect to t, and therefore a function of kappa. So c kappa e to the a. What is a? It's just minus kappa to the fourth. Minus kappa to the fourth, and then t. So that's already very good. We have a slightly more explicit formula for u hat, and the next thing we want to do, which is a thing we haven't used yet, which is the initial condition. 
So let's plug in t equals zero. And then we get u hat kappa zero equals c kappa e to the minus kappa to the fourth zero. And that becomes c kappa. And so c is just a Fourier transform of u initially which is the same as the Fourier transform of the initial condition. So once again, to summarize, so C kappa, it is U kappa, U hat kappa zero, and then in a previous video, I calculated this to be F hat of kappa. And so the nice thing is, we now have a formula for U hat, because U hat was, C kappa, which now is F hat kappa, and then E of minus kappa to the fourth. And now remember what we did for the heat equation. For the heat equation, the point was to write this as a Fourier transform with the view of later using convolution. So now, leave step three. Write e of minus kappa to the fourth t as g hat kappa t for some g. Now here is where things get a little bit different because for the heat equation we had the Gaussian where we could find g explicitly but careful, this is not Gaussian. So instead, what we have to do is to use the inverse Fourier transfer. Because remember, the inverse Fourier transfer tells us precisely how to write any function as a hat. So here, so g of xt is the inverse Fourier transform of this function, which I like to remind you is 1 over 2 pi integral from minus infinity to infinity of e of minus kappa to the fourth t and then e to the minus i kappa x and then d kappa. So once again, 1 over 2 pi, whatever function we have, and e minus i kappa x, and to get a function of x, we integrate with respect to kappa. Which, again, don't attempt to evaluate that integral, in this case, it's not possible to do so, but at least we do have a formula in terms of integrals. And the cool thing is, the rest is just as usual. So kind of a grand finale, so step four. What did we have so far? So u hat kappa t was f hat kappa times e of minus kappa to the fourth t. And what we did in the previous step is to write this as a Fourier transform. So f hat of kappa g hat of kappa t. And now to combine those two, you just have to use convolution. So this is the same thing as F star G hat kappa T. So what do we end up getting? So U hat kappa T is F star G kappa T. So U is just F star G. So what is our solution? U of xt is f star g of xt, which if you want, you can just write as integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of y, g of x minus yt dy, and where g is the inverse Fourier transform. So where g of xt 
is e of minus kappa to the fourth t. Inverse, which is 1 over 2 pi integral from minus infinity to infinity of e of minus kappa to the fourth t, e of minus i kappa x d kappa. Which is really cool in my opinion because if you're okay with integrals, then you do have a formula for uh, you. And again, this basically works for any linear PDE with constant coefficients, at least formally, because we didn't say anything about whether this converges or whether this makes sense. Again, just to show you how powerful Fourier transforms really are. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.